I hadn't, I hadn't really, really blessed, blessed to, to, um, to, to quiet, quiet time, time every day, and I share it through my YouTube channel. It's called Daily Revival, or, and in Korean, Meil Buhum. And I've been using um, some of the notes that I uh, used or wrote 26 years ago. So 26 years ago, Jenny and I, well, we planned a church called Oikos. And so actually, this note was written 26 years ago. Um, it's called Shepherd Study, meaning we had a small group, and small group leaders were called shepherds. So I would train the shepherds separately. And so this comes out of my uh, study of Book of Acts. So 26 years ago, we are studying Book of Acts together. But uh, later, 26 years later, um, all the compilation or the collection of my book of Acts notes were 1,300 pages. Wow. <laughs> so I'm, I'm so happy that I got so much to share every day. And so this is this morning. So uh, this morning I, I woke up early and then I was reading. I thought, wow, how Nimit, you pray, God, uh, you listen as we pray. And I said, yes, that's true. And also God speaks. <laughs> So we hear, right? And this is what this text is about. So go to Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. And I'm just going to read slowly and then I'm going to make points along the way. Uh, this is um, Saul, who later becomes Paul. And Saul uh, endorsed the death of Stephen in prior chapter. Now, chapter 9 of Acts picks up what he's up to. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to synagogue in Damascus so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether man or woman, he might take them as a prisoner to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Said Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Mm, I think I need to pray. Lord God, speak to us as you spoke to Saul, who later becomes Paul. God, we would like to hear from you that we too will be transformed. By your power. Holy Spirit, God, anoint us, keep us, and, and, and so that we could have a daily revival with you. Let us be victorious today in this Oasis House context, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There's a two calling in this chapter. One is God calling Saul, and later verses God calling Ananias. I don't think we have time for Ananias, but it's very similar. Here, First thing that we find is that God is calling Saul regardless of the condition that Saul is in. Meaning, God doesn't just speak to the righteous. God doesn't just speak to Christians. He's a Christian killer. <laughs> and God shows up. So don't underestimate. Don't say, oh, because we are Christian, God will only speak. No, God will speak to this crazy person he endorsed killing of Stephen, and now he wants to not... Putting every Christian in the prison in Jerusalem is not enough. He went to the high priest and said, there's another other city called Damascus. I want to go gather up all the Christians, the people of the way, and bring them to Jerusalem so you could put them in prison. Wow. God's calling, right? Now, God speaks in a voice. That's the first, you know, God speaks to everyone and also God, verse 4, he fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, okay, 2,000 years ago, a Christian killer heard the voice of God. Why wouldn't God not speak to us today? See, all these years of theology and all that and said, there are a lot of theological group that said, God doesn't speak anymore. If you hear from God, that's from the devil. 
So there's a theology that developed last 2,000 years, argues that you cannot hear God. Matter of fact, when you hear God, you're hearing for the devil. Why? <laughs> so that's the whole, there's a, literally hundreds of millions of Christians who believe that. So, so much so that 30 years ago, in group of like five, 600 Korean American college students, guess what the title was? My preaching. Hear the voice of God. <laughs> and I preached. And, and after prayer, after preaching, I was happy and I was praying like this. And I felt someone in front of me. I'm like, you know, when someone's in front of you, you kind of feel it with the God's love. I said, who is this? I looked up, it was a big Korean American college student who came me like this, really mad. I'm like, I says, what are you doing? I said, this young man said, you are preaching heresy. You're preaching. He said, my pastor said, if you hear from God, it's from the devil. So you just preach the message of the devil. He was ready to punch me like this. You know, I'm like. <laughs> and so the whole group believed that. So that group never invited me again. <laughs> So this theology is real. This theology that says, if you hear from anything, it's from the devil. Also, if you get healed today, it's from the devil. Because God, Holy Spirit does not heal. Because Holy Spirit died 2,000 years ago. Holy Spirit doesn't act. Holy Spirit doesn't... Holy Spirit died or even Jesus died? No, Holy Spirit, the cessationists believe the activity of the Holy Spirit died. It, it's an imperial. So Holy Spirit era ended. Now this is the era of grace, the scripture. The Spirit of God died or ended, not died, ended, cessation, means ceased. Now this is the work of the Holy Scripture. So only Holy Scripture leads to the way of salvation. So Jenny and I, we befriend this great church called Grace Church in Fullerton. Now there's a pastor in LA preaching against the church saying that they are the, demon, the tools of the demon because they are preaching that when you receive the gift of the Spirit, you pray in tongue and all that. Because our friend is preaching that you could receive gift of tongue, now there's a whole bunch of Christians saying that that's from the devil. You cannot pray in tongue because gift of tongue ended 2,000 years ago. Now this is an era of grace. Grace only is the Holy Scripture. Word of God only. Yeah. So, just, you know, so when I was preaching this 26 years ago, I'm like, but he says here, <laughs> if Saul heard the voice of the Lord, and Saul becomes Paul, because there's a power in anointing of the Holy Spirit, how, how, how can we deny that? How can we deny that, right? So that was my teaching 26 years ago. I still stand by that. So now, now get up, the Holy Spirit say, now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must to do, right? What did the voice say? Who are you? I am Jesus. <laughs> the Holy Spirit said, I am Jesus. Why? Because there's a triune God, God the Creator, Jesus the Son, and Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. These are triune God. They're three in one. So when Holy Spirit says, I am Jesus, when Jesus said, I am God, it's all the same, because when God created universe and created man, God said to each other, let us create a man according to our image. Holy Spirit God, Jesus, the Creator said, let us create man according to our image. So when we were created, there's an image of God, image of Holy Spirit, image of Jesus in us. So he says, I am Jesus, whom you persecute. He said, so Saul saying, what do you mean I persecute? I want to bless you, God. That's why I'm killing Christians. I'm endorsing killing of Christians. He said, and then when he heard the voice from heaven thundering, that I am Jesus, he realized on the spot, wow, Jesus is God. That's the realization. Jesus is God. And then Jesus says, you will be told what you must do. No option, no choice. See, when God speaks, we think like, okay, let me pray about it. <laughs> so it's not like that. We have no option. We have no choice. God always makes a decision 
and we would obey or not obey. And, and so, so sometimes we think calling is like, oh yeah, God called me to do this, but I'm going to really pray hard about it, see if I'm going to obey or not. It's not like that. You know, like Jenny and I, we always said, why are we in Cambodia? Well, because God told us to be in Cambodia. It's not like we had choice, you know. Oh, I thank God we love this country. Thank God, you know, we love, you know, Cambodia. We love, in spite of the electricity breaking, so that we have to suffer a little bit. But we felt like, oh, but this is still the, this is our country. This is the country that we're, we're in love with. But even if we hate it, if we, if we hate it, if electricity is going out every day and we have to suffer every day, we'll still have to be here. Why? Because we have no choice. Well, we have no choice because we want to be in That's right. Yeah. It's not that we don't have choice. That's right. Right? Right. <laughs> right. But in Saul's perspective, because he knew... See, that's why Saul becomes Paul. Saul knew when he heard the voice of God, he obeys. Because Saul only knew the Bible as the voice of God. And the Old Testament says, you need to keep the law to be saved. And that's why he's keeping the law. He's a Pharisee. Right? Now, the thing is, did everybody else hear the voice? No. Verse 7. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless because they felt something. But they heard the sound, but they did not see anyone. They heard just the whoa, but they didn't hear anything. They didn't articulate. Saul got up from the ground but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand to Damascus. For three days, he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. Forced fasting. <laughs> you know, he couldn't see, he couldn't eat. It's like, what was that? I heard a voice. They said, someone will tell you. I'll tell you what you must do. Wow. And then, now, oh, I guess we will go get to that. Now, there was a certain disciple at Damascus named what? Ananias. And to him, the Lord said in a vision, not in a voice, in a vision. So, does still vision, does God still give vision today? Absolutely. If God doesn't give vision and if vision is from the devil, there will be no more OSS ministry. <laughs> Because you guys primarily see through vision and minister through seeing the vision of God. So what happened, right? So there are still a group of people, cessationists, who they all know vision is, is from the devil. So here, not only God speaks to Saul in a voice, God speaks through Ananias in a vision. How do you see, in a, how do you communicate in a vision? Ananias, God speaks through a vision, Ananias knew right away that is from the Lord. And there was a message. The vision has been coming to us since Genesis. Our father of faith, Abraham, you know, the word of the Lord says, you don't have to go there, Genesis 15, 1. And this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. The word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I'm your shield. I'm your great reward. Genesis 46, 2. And God spoke to Israel in a vision. Jacob, Jacob. Wow. Psalm 89. Once you spoke in vision. He's talking to God. Once you spoke to me in vision, Lord. Daniel says, Daniel saw God revealed to Daniel in a vision. Right? Over and over and over again. Guess what? Acts 18. Later, when Saul becomes Paul. One night, the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent. So, continually, the Lord speaks to us disciples in a vision. And that's why OSS House, we, Jenny and I, we constantly see in a vision. You know, we see in a vision after vision, you know, and this is almost regular part of my life so that when God speaks, you know, as late as like, you know, this is 26 years ago, but 1996, you know, one day I was attending this big 6,000 people conference. There was going to be 6,500 Korean-American kids in this uh, city called Colorado Springs. I was, uh, I, was not a, I was not a speaker. I was going to just particip participate. 1996, I'm going there and I saw in the morning, I'm going to have to take airplane to go there. In the vision, I saw me in a suit preaching at night. 
Why am I preaching there? I'm not, I'm not a speaker. I'm not invited. Because a conference like that, all the speakers had decided two years before. So I'm like, I said, and then Lord said, bring your suit. I said, Lord, I'm not preaching there. Why am I bringing suit? So, but I brought a suit. And then I had a roommate, who was my associate pastor. And I put my suit there, and my associate pastor said, Pastor O, are you preaching here? I said, no. Why did you bring a suit? You never wear a suit. <laughs> you never wear a suit, even in your own church, I said. Well, Lord said I will be preaching here. I said, really? Today, it was a three-day conference. Two days later, I get a call from the organizer. Pastor O, uh, someone missed out. They couldn't come. Can you come and preach for us? <laughs> so it's like that. So God speaks to us through vision, clearly, very clearly. One time, it was 1999. It was so weird because 1999, Jenny and I were driving with the children in the, in, in the uh, 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 circle. I was fasting 40 days. 1999, I was making a circle. And with our children, we always had this, you know, maybe it was my, not with children. But anyways, I think Jenny and I were going through this freeway. And there was a place called Mysterious Circle. <laughs> it's, like, it's a circle that you have to make up. You know, hard curve and go. I always drive hard. Ah! You know, we tell my children, mysterious circle. They all scream. Ah! <laughs> and they're going, Myster they're little. yeah, they're little. <laughs> mysterious circle coming. They go, oh, ah! While we're having fun, I saw a vision, open vision, <laughs> of me preaching at this conference next year, next year September. <laughs> I said, Lord, I'm not invited to that conference. Why am I, you know, seeing the vision of preaching? And Lord gave me text message on the spot. It's preach on life of uh, uh, Joseph on a vision and how he suffered. And I said, okay. Well, a year later, I was invited. I was preaching that message. And that was the conclusion. I, next, day, next year, I did another fasting, 40 days. It was day after. The schedule was day after my 40-day fasting was done. It was at San Diego. There were several thousand young people there. This is so incredible because I was there, and I preached the message the Lord gave me. And after my message, something happened, something incredible. It's like some spiritual dynamic happened. The whole place was upside down. There were like people were crying. They were rushing toward the front, rededicating. Hundreds of young people rededicate. I was just repenting. I'm like, wow, you know, God gives up. It's a decision that God makes. You know, it's not like, oh, I'm so smart. I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna put my, you know, oh, I'm gonna be, be a great message. See, you just need to be open, and then ask the Lord, right? Ask the Lord. And I think when you really give yourself to that, and so I always, uh, I wrote a, and so I actually wrote a book. And prayer driven life and in that in that book I talk about how vision is so important in your life because then because vision will make you when you see yourself as that and you know we talked about looking glass self yeah looking glass self ask Pastor Jenny what that is about and it's about how you have your own self image based on looking glass whatever your parents saw you your image self-image that your parents saw you that's the image you look at and you become that or someone you love or someone you hate or someone society the cambodian society says christiana poor and christiana this and, and you, you look at them you you become that and it was the psychological you know principle 1920s and from america and, and all that and we're like you know i'm teaching my students that right now i'm like you you become how your spiritual mentors see you. If your spiritual mentors see you, that, oh, as a pastor, you're going to have to depend and I'll provide salary unless you, you know, and that's the image you're going to get. And then you'll never come out of that image. And so I said, no, the vision, you should have your vision as one, preaching the message and one, the gathering of the people, the Cambodian people, God's going to prosper. You are the one who's going to send missionary to Thailand, missionary to Vietnam. And, and that's the image that you have to have. Because if you don't see that yourself in a vision, you'll never become. So I wrote a poem. It's called, Tell Me Your Vision. And I'll end with that. Tell me your vision. Tell me your vision and I'll tell you your future. 
Vision is the color you paint your future in. Vision is the language of the Holy Spirit. Vision is the pillar of fire and cloud in the desert, guiding your life. Vision is the lamp to your feet that leads step by step. Work at your vision, and your vision will work at you. Follow your vision, and your path will be certain. Vision makes you. Tell me now your vision, and I'll tell you your future. So, you know, I pray that, you know, we talked about you guys, and, you know, we're so happy that, you know, I mean, the greatest joy that Jenny and I have is not that, oh, we're going to get a bigger building. No, it's, it's about you, the Oasis House that being developed as not man and woman of God, just woman of God for now. <laughs> Develop this woman of God. But what calling do you have right, in your life? Are you willing to say, Lord, thank you. I'm willing to obey. Yeah, as Jenny said, you have choice. But you must. The Bible says that. Bible says. Bible says. And Jenny's interpretation. And, and, and that's true. The Bible says that, yeah, God, when God calls, I'll tell you what you must do. And then you said, okay, Lord, but that's not self-image I have. I'm just, you know, I'm this, I'm that. Who, who told you that? Well, you know, so-and-so, and the image, and my education, my people, so far. I said, no, this is you. So, the Christian killer became the greatest apostle because of his private encounter. Now the history of the world changed for the last 2,000 years. We are in the same category. Saul is no different than you and I. So I just pray that they will be the case. Amen? Amen? So Lord, we come humbly before you and really subjugate ourselves to the Bible so that the word of God will bring truth not just as logos, the written words, but as Rhema, the spoken word. Let this written words of Acts chapter 9 speak to us and speak to us in a Rhema, the spoken word today. That we may live this day victoriously and have a revival in Jesus' name. Amen.